If you shoot a lot of digital content, there's a pretty good chance that you use this camera right here, the Sony FS7. And if you shoot broadcast or commercial work, there's an even better chance that you're using this device right here, the XDCA extension unit. Now, the unit does a number of really important things. First and foremost, it allows you to use V-Lock batteries. It also has GenLock and timecode in and out for syncing multicam or audio to camera. It's a much more efficient system for doing that. One final really important feature of the extension device is its ability to uh, export a 4K 12-bit RAW signal out, as well as it records HD ProRes to the internal XQCD cards. But I was really curious about the RAW capabilities, and I wanted to see, as a digital content producer, for most of the content that goes out online, was RAW actually worth it? So what I did was I created two different scenarios. One was a studio lit scenario with a gradient backdrop, and the other was a high contrast daylight scenario outside. So I recorded the two scenes with three different codecs. The first to the internal XAVC-I codec, which is 10-bit. Then I took the raw signal out to an Atomos recorder, which downgraded the 12-bit signal to a 10-bit ProRes HQ. And lastly, I took that raw signal out to an Odyssey 7Q+, which was able to record the full 12 bits as cinema DNG files. What I hope to show you in the footage is how well does each codec handle banding? How well does each codec resolve skin tones and colors? And finally, how well does each codec hold up the dynamic range of the camera? And how much latitude does it give you in post-production? Without further ado, here are my results. Okay, so first up is our studio setup, and you can tell right off the top that there is a difference in color between the internal and the outputted raw signal to ProRes. Um, probably has something to do with how the sensor data is being manipulated. But the most important thing we're looking at here is the gradient on the backdrop. And in the internal, you can really see the banding happening from center out to the corners. Uh, it's obvious and to the point where it sort of draws my attention in my eyes there. Whoa, 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 hold up. If XAVC is 10-bit, what's with all the banding? And the answer is... Gremlins. Well, sort of. Here's my theory. XAVC is a fairly new codec that's quite advanced and its inner workings require a fairly robust decoding platform. As such, some NLEs don't play very nice with it. Premiere, I'm looking at you right now. However, ProRes has been around forever. Its decoding is relatively simple, requiring less from your CPU. However, the trade-off is, of course, large file sizes. And Premiere itself may have some limitations due to it being sold as a no-need-to-transcode kind of NLE. To test this theory, I brought the footage into Resolve. And lo and behold, looking directly at the 4K XAVC file, you can see that there is virtually no banding. When I output the footage to ProRes HQ and then import into Premiere, the quality continues to hold up. So what gives? I don't know. But hey, maybe you should grade your XAVC footage in Resolve. It's a free program, so there's no excuse. Okay, moving on. Here is the ProRes file taken from the raw feed into the Atomos recorder. Looks pretty similar to that of the XAVC Resolve version. Moving into the raw, the first thing I need to mention is that I was using a demo version of the 7Q+, which forces this watermark bar. Nothing I can do about it, sorry. Premiere seems to handle RAW surprisingly well. I like the skin tones the best here, but nothing else stands out as different. Moving on to our exterior scene, and as you can see, we have some highlight clipping in our model shoulders. First up is the XAVC in Premiere. The banding is still an issue in the top left corner. However, I was surprised at how much the dynamic range holds up in the XAVC, especially in what was blown out skin tones on her shoulder. However, there is some crazy green color cast happening in the shadows, and I was unsuccessful in pulling that out in post. It's possible that it was from a light bouncing off the nearby tree. Things improve as predicted when first pumped through Resolve. Moving on to ProRes, things are looking better, but interesting that I couldn't reel in the highlights on the shoulders as much as I could with the XAVC. I'm not a colorist, so it's totally possible that I don't know what I'm doing. Finally, with the RAW, we definitely get the best looking image of all the codecs. The skin tone looks the most natural here and doesn't really show any of the green in the shadows. That said, I still struggle to reel in the highlights. Moving into post, let's look at the data usage. XAVC comes in at 90 gigabytes for an hour of footage. 
considering the quality of XAVC, that's pretty darn impressive. ProRes is three times as much, which is not really a big deal if you're deleting your footage after you upload. But for archiving, this could quickly add up in both space and cost. And finally, on to RAW. This is why RAW is generally the domain of larger budget projects. The more complicated post workflow and cost to carry this much data often make it a poor choice for digital content. So a few other last points about working with RAW. There's a couple really interesting things that I noticed. When I brought the Cinema DNG files into Premiere, I noticed that they came out looking really, really dark. And that is because inherent in RAW, there is no actual picture exposure information. It is up to your viewer, be it Premiere or DaVinci Resolve, to make some assumptions based on how you want to view the file. We can see this in the gray card exposure footage. For S-Log3, as a rule, you want to overexpose by about one and a half stops. Normally middle gray would be about 32%, but I bring middle gray to about 50. Convergent designs, as with most cinematographers, suggest this as to avoid noisy shadows. However, you will see that when I look at the raw footage with the same exposure information, we drop down to 32% and have a bit more contrast in the image. So raw does not seem to interpret any of your exposure settings. So in summary, the XAVC is a powerful codec when handled properly. That means grading in Resolve and ideally by a trained colorist. Recording in ProRes externally does have its advantage because it allows you to streamline your process by avoiding a Resolve or similar round trip. RAW was the obvious win for skin tones, but I would only suggest this if you have the space, time, and money to carry the extra file size. At the end of the day, you should always do your own tests as there are way too many variables to prove anything conclusively. My tests were purely anecdotal, and they were not supervised or scrutinized by anyone, so yeah, take them with a grain of salt. I encourage you to do your own tests, and if you don't already use the XDCA unit, you can rent it at VizTech, along with a variety of external recorders to do your own test. And that's about it, so thanks for watching, and happy shooting.